Hi, my name is Colin Merrifield with Protein Simple, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you Microflow Imaging. Microflow Imaging, or MFI, was developed to measure and characterize subvisible particles in pharmaceutical products. Subvisible particles are generally defined as being between 1 and 100 microns, and they're designated as a critical quality attribute by the FDA and the USP. And the reason for this designation is because of the potential health threat that they present to patients who are receiving that therapeutic. The original research into subvisible particles in pharmaceutical products was focused on the risk of capillary occlusion, uh, which could be caused by inorganic materials that had been uh, introduced into the pharmaceutical during the manufacturing process, and these could include rubber, glass, or metal. To combat this, the technique of light obscuration was introduced to help measure and control these particles. Modern biopharmaceuticals present unique health risks such as immunogenic reactions and they also have unique challenges when it comes to characterizing the subvisible particles within them and these are inadequately addressed by light obscuration. This poster will be focused on demonstrating how MFI provides some of the crucial information that light obscuration misses. To begin, I'd like to talk a little bit about how MFI works. So MFI is based on the concept of bright field microscopy. So on one side of the sample, we have a light source, which illuminates the sample. And then on the other side, we have our optics, which focus a camera, which then images the sample as it passes by. Now, in between that, we have the flow cell, which and the flow cell is crucial for guiding the path of the sample past the optics. And this provides two essential things. One, it makes sure that we image as much of the sample as possible. So MFI is able to image up to 85% of the sample that is passed through. And this is very important for ensuring that the results that you get from the analysis are statistically significant. And if you're doing something like final product QC, uh, you're able to analyze the vast majority of the sample that you recover from that specific uh, vial or syringe. The other thing that the flow cell ensures is that all the sample passes through the correct focal depth of the system. So any optical setup that's under magnification has a focal plane. And it's very important that all the particles are measured within the same focal plane to ensure that the measurements are accurate, precise, and you can fairly compare particles that are measured in the same sample. One of the main advantages that MFI provides over light obscuration is a more sensitive detection threshold. So in this study done by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, polystyrene beads were measured by both MFI and light obscuration in matrices of varying refractive index. In this chart, you can see the series of measurements taken with MFI represented in the red series, and you can see the measurements taken with light obscuration as represented by the blue series. Now, if you turn your eyes to the dotted line which vertically intersects the chart, this is the point at which the refractive index of the beads and the matrix is perfectly matched. So here is where the beads have become almost optically invisible to the two systems. Now, as you move left from this dotted line, you begin to see the measurements taken by the two technologies diverge. So at only a 4% difference in refractive index between the beads and the matrix, MFI is already measuring within 10% of the nominal diameter of the beads, whereas the light obscuration measurements are only coming in at about 25% of the total diameter of those beads. So MFI is measuring about 18 microns compared to the nominal diameter of 20 microns, and light obscuration is only measuring 5 microns under those same conditions. This ability to measure particles with low optical contrast to their matrix is especially important for evaluating biopharmaceuticals. Uh, Protein-based products have a tendency to aggregate and they can form particles which are highly translucent and light obscuration often misses these particles. In this study, we compared the particle levels measured by MFI, which is represented in blue, and the particle levels measured by the Hayek light obscuration system, which is represented in orange. The samples analyzed were solutions of monoclonal antibody which were subjected to two different types of stress, either shaking or cavitation. So these are known stressors which cause proteins to aggregate. And the data is represented in four different size bins. So particles greater than two microns, particles greater than five microns, 10 microns, and 25 microns. And you can see that for both the conditions and at all size bins, 
MFI measures far more particles than light obscuration does. In fact, it measures up to 10 times more particles uh, for some of the size bins. Because of its enhanced ability to see protein aggregates, MFI is commonly employed as a formulation development tool, a process development tool, and is heavily involved in final product QC. The other crucial piece of information that MFI provides that light obscuration does not is particle morphology. So light obscuration, as its name implies, is a measurement that's based on the shadow of a particle as it passes by a light source. And accordingly, the only piece of information that's derived from this is the size or diameter of the particle. Whereas with MFI, because we're capturing an image of that particle, we're able to derive quantifiable morphological parameters, which we can then use to separate different particle populations within the sample. In this chart, we have an example of how one morphological parameter can be used to see differences between three different particle populations. So the three different particle types are protein aggregates, silicon oil drops, and air bubbles. And the morphological parameter that we're leveraging is the intensity minimum. And this is a measurement of how translucent or opaque that particle is. And you can see on the far right of the chart, the protein aggregate, which is highly translucent, uh, it has a lot of light that transmits through it. This scores very highly in terms of intensity minimum. Now the silicon oil drop, with its dark outline and its bright center, has a slightly lower score. And then the highly opaque air bubble scores very low for intensity minimum. So this is one morphological parameter that can be leveraged to differentiate these three different particle populations. Now people commonly employ multiple morphological parameters in conjunction with one another to form filters which can be highly discriminatory in terms of their ability to differentiate particles. It's this combination of sensitivity and image-based morphology which makes MFI an invaluable tool for developing and manufacturing uh, modern biopharmaceutical products. If you're interested in learning more about the product, we have all of the resources available on the MFI product page at ProteinSymbol.com. Thank you so much.